It's strange that a modern car today has so many controls. It has computers and massive amount of buttons and switches. Funny, actually, they're not all controlled by the people that drive the car. The, the car seems to uh, drive itself, really. Um, but when you really think of all the number of buttons, it's amazing, the number of controls. But this old car, this 1949 Dodge, it's strange. It has very few controls. And let's just have a look at them. We'll get in and start it up. Yep. Right, so inside the 1949 Dodge, we've got uh, the controls that um, allow you to drive it. So obviously the first thing we have is the starter. 1949, first year that uh, cars were made that started with the key. This is So this is the first time uh, you turn the key, as in modern cars. And it starts the engine. If the starter, if the starter motor will engage. Right. Well, now we've got a flooded engine. Right. That's one of the problems with carburetors, <laughs> especially when the car's been sitting around and there's moisture in, in, the, uh, in the carburetor. Right, we've now got the engine running, so we'll leave it running for a second. Uh, then the first, the first uh, control here is, is, is for the lights, and uh, two, two positions. One, you've got side lights, and then you've got main beam or main lights. As in most of these cars, the, the, the dips switch is on the floor. Um, coming in, we've got a, another control here which simply has two positions. One, you turn it to the left and it activates two lights, one under here and one here. And the other position, uh, it's just a rear stat. So when you put it this way, when, when the lights are actually on in the car, this here will just illuminate the dash brightly or dimly. That's all. That's all it does. The third control is very straightforward. It's the wipers. Now these are the original, the original uh, wipers which were um, run by vacuum and they're either on or off except of course their speed are controlled by the amount of vacuum that the engine requires so when the engine is revving and requires vacuum uh, the wipers actually start working so we'll see if that happens so we turn it and the wipers work but as soon as I put the throttle on they slow and they go fast again Very good. Uh, then we have uh, on the other side here we have a uh, cigarette lighter. Very important. And amazingly, that's really it. I mean, oh, we've got uh, in, uh, indicators, uh, signals switch here, but it's an aftermarket one. So when this car was actually made and purchased back in 1949, it didn't have any. Um, indicators, any signals. So this was an aftermarket affair which I actually fitted. But it was very common in, in 1949 that uh, you had a choice. You lived in the, in the um, middle of America, out in the prairies I guess or somewhere. Uh, you had a choice between paying extra for a heater or for signals. You, you'd, you'd have the heater. Why have signals? Because there hardly any cars on the road. You just waved your hand or just drove around. So that's really all the controls. Uh, now we've got a few other things here. Obviously, we, we do have the uh, the handbrake release. So handbrake on, handbrake off, called an umbrella type. Uh, we've then got a here. We've got the release for the for the bonnet. So you have to pull this to be able to get the hood or the bonnet open from the outside. Down here, we've got um, a control which controls the um, va ventilation flap. So, 
push it down, which is very difficult when you're driving. And um, the flap comes up in the front, which allows fresh air into the car. We've got an, an added extra here, which I've added, which is the switch here. And this uh, works the, um, the washers, which are a necessity, obviously, in modern car, modern driving. But really, that, that's all. We've got a few other things, though. I mean, we've got a, we do have a heater, and the, the car was uh, supplied with a heater in 1949. Actually, it's a very effective heater. So you, you put the heat on, so you've got hot air. You've got a blower, which actually has got three speeds. Or one, two, no, sorry, this one's two speed. And so you, you've got the blower working at the moment. Uh, this particular car, unlike most of them, uh, is drawing fresh air from outside, so it's not recirculating, it's actually drawing fresh air, which is very good, because the recirculating ones were a bugger, because um, unless you had a window open or the vent open, you, you very soon start to become very drowsy. Um, if you pull this lever, it directs the air to the window, to the screen, and it will defog or demist the windows. It's not very effective uh, in the short term. It does actually improve over a longer period of uh, use where it dries the windscreen out. So that's a very simple heating system, but actually very effective and, and the heater does work very well. You've got an ashtray here, which all cars had really at that time. Uh, an electric clock, which is working, and a glove box. Oops, yeah, that's it. Now, interestingly, the dash here is actually, of course, metal, and it has this imitation wood grain effect, which on this particular car of mine, fortunately, is in original condition and it's absolutely like new beautiful done with paint of course we've got a few um, extras here one is a ashtray which is magnetic so it sticks to the metal dash and the cigarette holder which has got a um, magnetic base and that's got a packet of cigarettes in it it's just really for effect but the controls therefore very very simple oh of course we've got a steering wheel and we've got a gear lever so what have we got here we've got uh, a three-speed manual so we've got a clutch we've got fluid drive though so what does that mean put the clutch in and we put the car forward the lever forward and down which puts us in first when we put our foot on the brake and we let the clutch out, we're now in gear. But we're not moving. Just take the handbrake off. So here we are, we're in gear. We're in first gear. And uh, all I'm doing is holding the car on the clutch. Sorry, on the, on the brake. Even confusing myself now. As I take my foot off the brake, the car is actually moving forward on its own like an automatic. I put my foot on the brake and it stops. And I'm not, I haven't put the clutch in and the engine hasn't stalled. If I put the clutch in and put the car lever, the gear lever up, I'm in reverse. That, that was because I took my foot off the clutch. I'm now in reverse, just holding the car on the brake let it off the car the car moves backwards so the fluid drive allows you to have the car in gear and hold it on the brake so when you come to a halt at traffic lights and you're in gear you simply stop keep your foot on the brake and let it off and put it back on the throttle to go forward so it's a very good affair especially on hills very useful lovely and it it saves wear and tear on the car as well 
on the transmission. The radio in this car is obviously the valve radio. It does work. Um, they were an option. Obviously, they, they didn't come with the car. Most cars that you see, the older ones, they would have a, a blanking plate here, which was just a solid plate, so that it was the same as the, the rest of the dash. On these old radios, um, the button usually on the left here is the off button, so that, that turns off. So if you push any of the pre-selects, the, um, the radio will start to come on. So now the, the dials that we've got up here, let's have a look. Um, on the top here, we've got the, um, the oil pressure. So let's have a look. Oil pressure is running quite normally. Down here, we've got the fuel gauge showing half full, notoriously inaccurate. I think you have to try and learn how your own individual fuel gauge on your car works because they tend to be showing maybe half full and then suddenly um, a mile down the road they've gone down to empty. Uh, over here we've got the um, charging and you can see if I rev up the it's the generator, how much it's charging the battery. And then up above here, we've got the temperature gauge, giving us the temperature of the, uh, the water temperature. So in conclusion, a 1949 Dodge, minimal controls as far as um, modern cars are concerned. Uh, and yet, you can get in this car, drive for miles, have a very enjoyable time, uh, you've got all the basic things you need. In other words, you can put lights on, you can put uh, indicators on, uh, you can uh, work a horn, and uh, you can uh, get the wipers going, you can have a radio, you've got a heater, you've got an ashtray, you can light your cigarette from a cigarette lighter. Um, I mean, what else do you want? I just wonder, you've got a clock as well to tell the time, you've got a glove box to put uh, things in, uh, you've got sun visors up here. Uh, so uh, to, to stop the sun shining in your eyes, you've got a rear view mirror. Um, you, what else do you want? Um, obviously, modern car manufacturers believe that we want lots of things, um, and I guess we as uh, consumers uh, go along with it. But actually, this car is great fun to drive, more fun as far as I'm concerned than the uh, the modern cars that I own. Yeah, okay. I think I'll go for a drive then.